What's going on, guys, and welcome to another episode of In the Hot Seat. Of course, as always, i got a great show lined up for you guys, and as well, I'm being joined by my two guests at this time. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? I'm WWE Uploads HD version 1, a.k.a. Babolta. And I am Thrash Maniac 99. All right, we got a great show lined up for you guys. I'm going to start things off with the first topic. And as of right now, it is a rumor, but things could obviously change with that. And that has been kind of a little bit of a hot topic I've been seeing going around, and that is about SmackDown going possibility of going three hours. And I wanted to get you guys' thoughts on this. How do you feel about it? Do you think it will happen? And I'm going to go things over with Rash. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean... I personally don't see SmackDown going three hours because Raw for three hours, it's like they just put a bunch of unnecessary stuff over there. So if they did for SmackDown, it turned out to be the exact same thing with unnecessary segments and whatever crap that's over on Raw. SmackDown is just fine the way it is. In fact, speaking of SmackDown, I'm actually going to a SmackDown in like less than two months. And you'll be seeing a day in the live video from it, so I sh- it should be fun. But SmackDown should just stay the way it is because I enjoy it. Yeah, I agree with Thrash. I think that um, if they just made SmackDown three hours, I think it would just get uh, more boring. And to be honest, for me anyway, I don't even watch SmackDown because at the end of the day, we've got the SmackDown spoilers, and you know, we always have SmackDown spoilers come up on a Tuesday night or Wednesday. So I just yeah. don't. I, I think the only thing that would help it with making it three hours of maybe you know promoting young talent within uh one hour of the show but uh dis- despite that you know it wouldn't really help so to be honest smackdown three hours i think they should just leave it where it is and you know try not to ruin it because they might make it even worse if they make it three hours in my opinion yeah, to me personally, I don't really see SmackDown going to three hours. We got Raw as it is three hours, and that's just good enough. Um, if they wanted to do some more stuff, then maybe they should do like some SmackDown stuff on there first, and then see how it is. But you know, I think SmackDown is good enough. It goes by fast. It's two hours, so it goes by really quickly, good enough, and it has some good storylines going into it. So I've always enjoyed SmackDown, and I tend to watch it, you know, pretty weekly. So I have no problems with it. I know other people go out on Friday nights and don't really tend to watch SmackDown and read the spoilers but you know I don't really care for the spoilers that much so as of right now I think keeping it as two hours is fine enough and having it being with another hour might be overkill I'm just saying with that so that's how I feel about it there and uh, recently also it looks to be that the Hell in a Cell coming up this year is looking to be the last and final Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, and it looks to be. So uh, with that being said, uh, there might be just one pay-per-view for October, which is fine, and which I believe is going to be just Battleground. So with that being said, how do you feel about Hell in a Cell being scrapped, and do you think that there's going to be just one pay-per-view there, or could there be another pay-per-view coming uh, within that same month again? Uh, how did you feel about Hell in a Cell overall? And WWE uploads, how do you feel about that? Thank you, thank you. I think that WWE finally realised that the Hell in a Cell pay view was a bit stupid. Not the pay view itself, but the name. Because why, why are you going to have, you know, uh, their pay per view name as Hell in a Cell as a gimmick match? I think that's just a bit corny. And I think WWE realised that. And um, could we have another pay per view, um, you know? to replace Hell in a Cell, maybe. But maybe I think the reason why WWE have, like, let go of Hell in a Cell is for another reason is because they don't want to put too many um, pay-per-views um, because they kind of, they, you know, they might want to save their money for that. Um, but I am glad, though, that they've let go of the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view because there was no point for it, um, especially the name. I think it was a stupid name, you know. Having all these gimmick pay-per-view uh, names, it was just uh, a bit silly and um, I think it was just corny. So, yeah, I'm glad that they let go of the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Yeah, and for me, it's like, when they had the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, at first it was all right, but it's like it just started to get stale because Hell in a Cell used to mean so much. And then when the pay-per-view started, it's like Hell in a Cell started to fizzle. Same with, like, other pay-per-views like Money in the Bank and TLC and... Even Elimination Chamber, however Elimination Chamber, it's become a staple to Road to WrestleMania, and that's fine. But for, like, Money in the Bank, it's like 
Money in the Bank needs to go back to being at WrestleMania because it's like we know there's going to be two Money in the Banks every year. They should just put that at WrestleMania because that was one of the things that made WrestleMania even more special for a little while. And then with Hell in a Cell, it needs to go back to being who knows when they'd be when there would be a Hell in a Cell. Yeah. Because it's always the element of surprise for that match, except exactly. now with the pay per view, it's like we know there's going to be a hell in a cell. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. like and like um yeah, Money in the Bank uh, at WrestleMania, it really showcased the um younger guys, and it really gave them a bit more recognition. With you know it's such a big pay per view event as uh, WrestleMania, so I think yeah, Money in the Bank. I mean, I don't mind Money in the Bank as pay per view anyway because I think Money in the Bank is an awesome pay per view. I mean, I wouldn't that be that bothered if it. Well, I would. I um, what's the word? I wouldn't be that bothered if it um if. If if it didn't get taken away, because I think it should stay Money in the Bank pay per view. But um, again, like I understand, you know, it would be good if they had Money in the Bank at WrestleMania as well, because again, like I said, it does showcase the younger guys as well. Yeah, as far as gimmicks go and everything for pay per views, yeah, I just wish it was like how it used to be. You always knew what month a certain pay per view was, but now it's a little bit more difficult on that note. And Hell in a Cell being like, oh, uh, just with this being the last pay per view for this year and it'll be gone next year, I think that's fine. I'm not really going to miss it either. Uh, like I said, it was good in the beginning, but now it just kind of got stale and boring. Um, I like the element of surprise to myself, and, you know, I always, you know, either ended feuds, and, you know, recently we kind of saw it actually start feuds, which was kind of confusing. Uh, it sounded kind of good, but it should really be how it used to be, and yeah. I like it having to be every once in a while, like, as we're recording this right now, uh, yeah. especially going back to with the steel cage yeah. uh, type of stipulation, that's cool. We don't see that often, so we're going to be getting that for SmackDown this week. Uh, so it should be like that every once in a while, and then yeah. and like a major few, and then that's how it should be. Not really as a pay per view. So I think this is really fine that WWE is actually being able to do this. And getting into the next topic here, and I think this is pretty interesting. And recently, he is going to be having a new DVD. It's a match DVD uh, from what I am uh, actually uh, concerned with as of right now and that I've learned. And that's about Bill Goldberg. Do you see him coming back, uh, maybe promoting DVD, doing something with the WWE? And uh, do you see him coming back for a match in general? How do you feel about that? And I'm going to go things over with Thrash. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, for a while, WWE's been considering signing Goldberg to a Legends contract, which would be great so we could see him again, because it's been since WrestleMania 20 since we've seen Goldberg, and it's been a long time. And for a match, I would like to see him have one or two more matches before he's completely finished. I mean, one in particular, which is probably might gonna, which might happen, and it's rumored to happen, which would be him and Ryback at WrestleMania 30. Which I think it won't be terrible. It's just gonna be a cool thing to get the crowd crazy. And the second one, probably. And Goldberg said this in like shoot interviews and like Twitter and stuff. If there was one match he wishes that could have been redone was his match with Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 20 because we all know that match it was they didn't care about doing the match because it was their last match in their contracts and it turned out to be a horrible match Goldberg said all the time he wishes he could redo that match and they would have done a much better job and you know with today if Goldberg can get in shape and we know Lesnar's in great shape I think if Goldberg can get in shape and if they had a rematch, I think it'd be way better than their match at WrestleMania 20. So those would be the two matches I would like to see Goldberg do. But with the DVD, I mean, it would have been cool if they would have put a story with it. But since it's a match set, I'm still going to get it because at least they finally made some kind of Goldberg DVD. And there's a few matches on there that I'm looking forward to checking out, such as him and DDP from Halloween Havoc 98 and him and Hogan on Nitro when he won the title. There's going to be some good stuff on that DVD, so um, I could see Goldberg coming back at some point. Yeah, um, I, I do... I, I, I... 
Goldberg, he will return at some point. It's just it's just uh, the point of where when will he return? I mean, uh, it does look like it's gonna get clo- it's gonna get closer and closer to a return because like I remember I read something up that um, his son actually watches his matches and that gives him more uh, you know more fire that he wants to um, return and you know do something and you know it's 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 hard with Goldberg like. One minute he's like, "Yeah, I do. I would like to go back." Then the next minute he's like, "Oh, f it. No, I, I don't want it to go back." So you know, it's like give and take really with Brock Lesnar. I mean, we'll, uh, uh, not with Brock Lesnar, with Goldberg. Um, do we will we see Goldberg return to the WWE one day? Highly likely. When I don't know. I mean, um, it's just one of those things. I mean, it looks like it will be getting closer and closer to. Um, yeah, uh, return of Goldberg, and I think it would be awesome if Goldberg returned, even if it was just for one match. Just, just to see Goldberg return would just be um, amazing. It would be unprecedented. Yeah, to me, it would be really fucking awesome if he can have the contract like he did have in two thousand and three. I've never seen Goldberg before, and I was able to see him then, and I thought he was really awesome, and I liked the stuff he was doing with Triple H and Evolution. That was really fine. So if he can have the contract. Kind of like that, or what Brock Lesnar's doing, and show up every once in a while, maybe for like the big pay-per-views, I think yeah. that would be fun. And then that type of Legends contract deal, I think would be really great for him, and maybe promote his DVD, and then do other stuff, and have at least one more run with the company, and I think that would be really fine to me. Um, so, you know, I think that's overdue, and I think that, you know, Brock Lesnar and Goldberg match, to relive that, and actually have something more go into it, and have it be much more better than WrestleMania 20, then I think that would be really great because that match, you know, I thought it was going to be really awesome. The build up was really cool, but the matchup itself didn't really live up to the hype all that much and it kind of left a bad taste in everyone's mouth. So, you know, I was kind of really disappointed in that and it's kind of a shame that that had to happen. But, you know, it is what it is when it comes to that. So maybe we'll get to see uh, maybe some, a few more matches from Goldberg Glad once he comes back. If he doesn't, then, you know, it's entirely up to him. Uh, now getting into a few topics with TNA here, and uh, recently we did see the budget cuts, you know, take full effect a lot more. A lot of people have been let go. Some people are still looking to be uh, possibly even released from TNA. Recently we had SoCal Val uh, released. We had Brooke Hogan, uh, some people from Gut Check, and rumors now looking to have Devon be out of TNA. So how do you feel about that? I know uh, WWE Uploads, I know you haven't really been keeping up with TNA, but I know yeah. you've heard of that so maybe you could give your thoughts on that a little bit if you want to um yeah i think i think what i think what tna are just doing they're just finding the wrestlers that are not really doing anything and i think that they're just finding the wrestlers that don't do anything and then they just you know give them the budget cuts i mean like i've heard rumors like aj styles may be leaving as well um and i did and i did actually hear that they actually released one of the knockouts um, which was valid i don't actually know that knockout but um uh, a friend did tell me though that she didn't really do anything, so that gave me the thought that TNA just finding superstars wrestlers who don't really do anything, and then you know just uh, give them the budget cut and then you know fire them. But um, I think I think what they're doing is they're just having like a bit of a, a clean out and they're trying to you know bring in a uh, new uh, fresh superstars, which uh, I think is good on TNA's part because at the end of the day, you they need new wrestlers, new superstars. Like you know, they need to get rid of the legends. No disrespect to the legends, the legends are the ones that um, have helped the wrestling business for over the years. But I think it's time for some of the legends to you know just take a step back and let the new guys come in because at the end of the day, it's going to be the new guys that are going to carry on the company for the next ten years or twenty years. That is, if TNA lasts that long, which. Personally, I don't think it will last that long, the way they're going right now. Um, but, yeah, that's my thoughts on all of that. And for me, if you guys have seen my uh, videos on my channel, you know how I feel about TNA right now, behind the scenes, that they're going through their financial issues and bringing in pointless people like Tito Ortiz, which, yeah, it's trying to sell the stinking Bellator thing, but at the end of the day, this is not MMA. This is pro wrestling, you know, and we don't need these kind of people in pro wrestling. I mean, yeah, it's going to draw something, but it doesn't matter. It's wrestling, not MMA. If you want to promote MMA, do it on another show, not on pro wrestling. And with the releasing, uh, like, SoCal Val and all these other people, 
they're releasing the wrong people. It's like this is now their 13th or 14th, 13th or 14th release in the, like the last two months of just people who are low money contracts when if they want to get their money back or get some money, release like four big money contracts and you'd be in much better shape. Like, I'd say get rid of Hogan because what they invested in with him, it's not bringing back. Kurt Angle, because, I mean, yeah, he's done a lot for TNA, but he's just, he and Sting both need to go because they're just not worth it anymore in TNA. And besides, they each both want to retire in WWE anyways. And Eric Bischoff, he needs to go because he's an idiot and he will always be an idiot. <laughs> I could understand keeping Jeff Hardy there because he is their number one merchandise seller, which is fine. But then again, they need to release a few big money contracts rather than releasing 13 to 14 low money contracts, which is pointless. So with the rate they're calling with all that, TNA is probably going to be I mean, I really give TNA about a year before they're out of business. At this point, TNA needs to sell to somebody, not Vince McMahon, who has money and can hire people that know wrestling to run the company, and TNA would be much, much better. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Vince. I mean, if he wants, we all know that if Vince McMahon wanted to buy out TNA, he could. Like, that's just, yeah, you know. Exactly. Yeah, if he wanted to, he could buy them right now, but he's not going to because deep down, WWE knows TNA is good for them because it gives another place for wrestlers to work. Yeah. Exactly. And plus, they do help out wrestlers that are in TNA anyway, like just with Kurt Angle. Um, if my if my memory serves me correct, um, they've actually been helping out Kurt Angle, WWE, with his rehab. Yeah, that's but, what he's doing right yeah, now. Yeah, so we don't... It doesn't... Thing. It, so it doesn't matter, I mean, even if you are in TNA, WWE will still help you. I think that is a good thing about WWE. That's why I do like about them. It's not just like, oh, fuck you, you're in another company. We're no, not going to help you. Though. Yeah, they still care, though. Yeah, they still care. They want to so, give you that chance. Yeah, so it is good. I think I, I like that move by WWE. I think that's really good. Yeah. To me, the budget cuts have been a little bit too crazy. They should actually just sit down, and it seems like they aren't really sitting down and actually going over and who they want to release. Um, you know, with the recent people that are looking to be released, like Devon, uh, Mr. Anderson, and just to name a few. So, you know, I think they should really take the time and actually think about who they are looking to be released and who should be let go and who hasn't really been around that much. And I like the whole idea of being able to rebuild TNA, have homegrown talent, and have you guys be able to really just be able to make a breakout uh, moment in TNA and uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, getting into the last topic too and this has been going around too recently on AJ Styles on his Facebook and this is basically a response to Simon Aka HD and other people have been doing this too as well that I've seen and that is the possibility of AJ Styles maybe going to WWE or possibly even the Indies since his contract is looking to be expired actually before Bound for the Glory. So uh, how do you guys feel about that? Do you think AJ Styles will stay in TNA? Should he go somewhere else? Thrash, how do you feel about that? Well, I mean, <clears throat> there are rumors right now that they're working out a deal with him to stay in TNA, but if he doesn't re-sign with TNA, really, everybody knows why AJ Styles never went to WWE whenever he had the chance in 2002, because at the time... His wife was in college, and he didn't feel that would be right for him to move to Cincinnati while she's still living with her mom for college money and all that stuff. That wouldn't have been right. So I don't know if he feels the same way about it now because it's, it's over 10 years later since that happened. So there is a chance he could go to WWE or possibly go back to ROH and, and all that. I would most likely see him going to WWE because, I mean, he... It's a crime. He never went to WWE for a run, but if the, if he does go to WWE, hopefully WWE doesn't change his name like they've done with a lot of other top indie stars. Yeah, that'd, so, that'd be kind of yeah. weird. Yeah, because he's always been AJ Styles throughout his entire career. And besides, and also with um, if if he does manage to stay with TNA. 
then he's probably going to win the Bound for Glory series. And besides, with what happened last night on uh, Impact, when he came out and turned, t- turned from a tweener to a face again, went back yeah. to the phenomenal one, it yeah, shows to me that they may have uh, kept him. They might have re-signed him at this point, but who knows? I mean, I haven't read too much about it, but we just have to wait for within these next few weeks to see what's going to go down. Yeah, I mean, um, the thing with AJ Styles, I think like everyone's always looked at AJ Styles as one of the uh, guys in TNA that's always stuck with the company through thick and thin, and um, like he would be like kind of like the face of TNA. I mean, not now, but you know, before like the face of TNA and kind of like the John Cena of TNA. Um, could he be going back to WWE? Who knows? I mean, he has actually well, he had, he has actually been in WWE before, well, when it was named WWF. I mean, there was a match between AJ Styles and the Hurricane on a WWF Metal, and we can check that out on YouTube. And um, could he be going to uh, WWE? There's a possibility. I mean, I would like to see AJ Styles in WWE. Um, I just hope that if he did go into WWE, that uh, they would actually treat him good, um, and they wouldn't just, you know, put him down the drain and, like, give him a, a rubbish feud and a rubbish gimmick and, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, you know, if he, do, if he does go... I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's his choice. I mean... It's just, if he does go to WWE, then I just hope they treat him good and not, you know, stupid. Yeah, with me actually thinking about this more, and when you think of TNA, I honestly think of AJ Styles and definitely one of those guys that has been a long-time veteran for the company. And even though I would love for AJ Styles to be in the WWE as much as everyone else, and I've stated that to you before, um, I think it would be really interesting to actually have AJ Styles be in WWE I think there would be a lot more, uh, like a lot more definitely great feuds coming for him if he does go. Hopefully, he would stay as AJ Styles, not as a different gimmick and a different name. It would seem kind of a little weird, but you know, it depends on you know how he feels and if he wants to go to the WWE. So that would be interesting. But to me, honestly. Uh, as of right now, I think he's still going to stay in TNA. We still got the BFG series still going on, and even in September. So he's been doing actually really well. I love this heel run, and it looks like, like I said, he has now a face as of right now, which is fine. Uh, so to me, I think he's really going to be the guy to win the Battle Glory series. That's why he turned heel in the first place, because he was looking to get his payback, and he had a weight, and he was pissed off about it. That's how I see it. And I think he will probably eventually win the world title from Bully Ray which I think would be fine for Bound for Glory and uh, we'll see what happens with that. So that's what, you know, to me, I think will happen if AJ Styles does resign, uh, resign with TNA and uh, if he does resign and go up with WWE, then uh, we'll see what happens with that. So uh, that about does it with all the topics that I do have. Was there any topics that you do have in yourself you want to talk about or any shout outs for that matter before we end the show? Uh, no, nah, I mean, just, you know, um, shout out to the Team Heel Gut Check podcast and make sure to check out, um, you know, their podcast that's every week. And, um, nice. uh, of course, subscribe to my uh, channel, WWE Uploads HD V1. And, of course, uh, follow me on Twitter at SweetChin123. And for me, for shout outs, uh, subscribe to my channel, ThrashManiac99, if you haven't already. Also, subscribe to my group channel, Wrestling Underdogs, as well as, um, my the call company I'm in YWF uh, Universe subscribe to there and of course finally subscribe to mine and Four Minor Projects gaming channel YWC Gamers Extreme we just did a live stream from Twitch TV and that's on our channel now and um, I just er, earlier finished up recording uh, a month of Here Comes the Pain season mode and I plan on uploading some of that stuff within this yeah. weekend. And it should be pretty cool. And uh, the channel as well for the Gut Check Podcast is Team Heal Podcast. Okay, cool. And it's been definitely fun having the show and uh, definitely having you guys on the show as well. Definitely go check out those shout-outs. And as well, of course, keep showing your support from my channel as well. Go follow me on Twitter. And that about does it for this episode for In The Hot Seat. If you guys want to talk about what we talked about, feel free to leave your comments down below or leave a video response. And until then, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Yeah, thanks for having me on, man. No problem. Thank you. See ya.